Okay guys, in this video we're going to be talking about 6L80 shift pressures. How do you do it? Why do you do it? Uh, what's the point? So I've had several of you reach out um, about you've got a 6L80 car truck and you know maybe you've added some bolt-ons or exhaust or this, that, and the other. Or maybe you've just been doing some data logging and the shifts just aren't very firm. Uh, they're not very snappy. They're just real soft and sluggish. Uh, the factory does this because they are trying to... Um, you know, uh, keep the vehicle nice to drive and you can talk on the phone and you can not spill your coffee, stuff like that. Um, but it's also not great for the life of the transmission. You know, when you slip the transmission a lot, you're going to, um, you know, heat up the clutch packs and burn through those pretty quickly. Um, and so I'm just going to do a quick video. This is from a, uh, for a subscriber who asked about, uh, 6L80 shift pressures. What do you do? Um, and uh, so yeah, here we go. So we're in a 2009 Cadillac Escalade uh, file. Um, so this is a Gen 4 platform, uh, but this applies to cars, this, you know, a Camaro, a VET, you know, whatever. Um, so we're gonna go to transmission and we're gonna go over here to shift pressures and we're gonna go to this general section, okay? So um, you're not gonna have to mess with downshifts uh, or adaptives. Um, there's one or two little tidbits that I'm gonna uh, put in here at the end. Um, that you do need to know, but you're gonna have to wait till the end to see those. Um, but we're primarily gonna be dealing here with upshift, okay? And if we go to this pattern X, this is gonna be your normal driving uh, pattern. The one axis is torque, so this is gonna be reported engine torque. The other gonna be transmission oil temperature, in, uh, and we're gonna use Fahrenheit. Kind of strange, but a little side note, um, I've actually been dealing with this with a heads cam LS3 Camaro, um, where we believe the uh, transmission oil temperature sensor has been going out and uh, we tuned it and it shifted great and ran great and then all of a sudden now it won't complete the shifts um, you know and I actually have that data log um, that I can show you um, where's it at in here is this 2010 Camaro and it looks something like this almost like the tr the vehicle is trying to complete the shifts but it simply will not. Uh, don't mind the fuel trim data up here. We I adjusted that. Um, but uh, yeah, this this is this really is just all over the place. Um, these are not what shifts uh, should look like. You can see here we're logging transcurrent gear. Um, and if we go somewhere, we get it in first gear. Let's zoom in. Yeah, and you can watch here. If you look over there to the left, it's going through the gears and look at these gear changes. We're mainly looking at the RPM trace. Um, and yeah, this thing just looks all over the place. Um, so it's not supposed to look like that. Um, and that's because the transmission is uh, shifting. It's shifting strange because of the fact that we believe that this transmission oil temp uh, sensor is going bad. Um, assuming the engine is dialed in at a given torque amount and then a given uh, transmission temperature, oil temperature amount, that's the amount of line pressure. Okay, and this is a factory uh, file for a truck. Uh, but we're going to navigate back over here to the general section. You'll notice here our max pressure is 109 psi, and you're probably thinking, well, that's kind of strange because over here, um, that we have uh, shift pressures that are much higher than that that are being commanded. That's right. That means you're not gonna actually be able to get to those because the max is 109. So if you have a stock car or a bolt-on car, something like that, the first thing I always uh, recommend that you do is go to this max pressure and bump this up to something like 160 or 175 and just see what that does. Um, you know, that's gonna allow more of these of these uh, program shift pressures to take place, which will, again, smooth out um, those RPM traces in your data logs and they will equate to a little bit snappier shifts because you're not slipping the clutch so much, okay? Another tidbit is this max line pressure. If you open this up, you'll see up here as the RPM increases, it's actually bleeding off pressure. Pressure. So something we might do here is go in and we might just set this to, uh, we could just say 160. It's kind of an arbitrary number. Um, you know, uh, but that would work just fine to make sure the pressure is not bleeding off. That would be another uh, good addition. Um, you know, and you would want to go out and drive the vehicle at this point. Um, now, if you ha and that's for if you've added, you know, um, you know, uh, a cold air intake or a set of headers or even an aftermarket intake manifold and a throttle body, basically bolt-on stuff. If you have added things like a camshaft, 
uh, or cylinder heads or even forced induction, you are going to have to come in here and actually increase this line pressure. And a good amount to start off is gonna be something like 10%, okay? It's not very much, it's not very aggressive. The vehicle is going to shift a little bit more firm, uh, but that's what you want. Don't be afraid of that, okay? Um, I would start here and you would just go to every, um, you would go to every uh, upshift, direct upshift, and you would add 10%. Um, some people will tell you just to do the first one and then copy and paste it to the rest. You can, um, I, I choose not to, um, but I'm gonna go to something like this. And then you can also do your pattern Y's, or your pattern Z's. Um, so, and again, you would wanna go out and test it. Um, and there again, however much you increase this by, again, you gotta think about your max pressure. So what, another thing that you could do before you even, um, you know, added pressure there is you could have made this 160, like 200. I think on that Camaro file I just showed you, um, I made that 200 and then I also probably made this line pressure 200, um, something like that. So that would be a really good uh, starting point for like an LS3 heads cam car. Um, a couple other things to think about is your adaptives. You don't need to touch anything in the downshifts, but in your adaptives, it's kind of strange how this maximum volume, this two to three is at, uh, what is this? 40, I'm not really sure what they're referencing there. And that, I assume that's a pressure percentage or a pressure amount. So we're gonna change that to 200. That's kind of commonplace in the 6L80 world. Another place that people like to go to is the up, is the uh, the torque management. Everybody likes to go to the torque management. Here under torque management and upshift, this is the percentage um, of torque management um, for every gear change, okay? One being there's 100% torque management left in, anything less 0.9 mean there's only 90%, okay? So as you go down, obviously there's more power, um, you know, less spark being pulled uh, on, on the shifts. In the four speed world, the 4L60s, 4L80s, it's pretty commonplace to start to chop that down. In the six, eight, and 10 speeds, we don't need to do that. Um, you can get these cars and trucks to do everything they're supposed to do with your shift pressures and your shift timing. Uh, we've gone over that in some of the other videos. I'm not gonna go over that here. Um, same thing of in the engine side. Um, we literally have a minimum spark base table that looks just almost like our high octane table. Um, and so you can limit in certain areas and load points um, how much spark is allowed to be pulled. You know, if you think about a Gen 3, you have just the one column and at a given RPM, there's a minimum amount, okay? You know, well this, you know, you really, especially with a converter car in this area, you know, you can really set this up to where, you know, it's not allowed to do, um, you know, it's not allowed to get into those negative numbers to where, you know, when it makes the, it's accelerating, it's not going to be in this big negative range, you know. Um, you've watched, you can watch my other videos on how to adjust this table um, and experiment with that on your own. But yeah, in a nutshell, this is, uh, you know, this is a really great, um, you know, starting point for you guys that are um, out there, you know, working on this stuff. So, you know, make sure you check your adaptives and you set that max two to three to 200. Leave your torque management alone. You don't need to touch that. Um, I've got some other videos on how to modify, you know, the general section of the torque management. I'm not going to go over that here. Um, you know, uh, you also want to make sure that your discrete shift torque mode. Um, I don't know why this is set to one. I usually like to set that to zero. Um, but yeah, for right now, this is going to be a really good starting point for those of you that are working on your 6L80s. Um, your, any of your six-speed transmissions and to get you up and running. So hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Um, if you find it to be interesting, like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below on what you'd like to see next. And yeah, we'll see you next time.